Hey everybody, before we get started, just a quick reminder to be sure and check out my podcast. It's called Photobomb. It's available anywhere that podcasts are found. And join my group on Facebook, Pro Photo Talk with Boo Ray Perry. As always, if you go to my website, the link is right down there. You will find links to every single piece of gear that I carry, including the tablet that I use in this demonstration that you're about to watch, and including, there's a link right down there, the actual actions that I use in this tutorial. You can download those actions for free and use them yourself. You can also donate a little bit of something uh, to me, a little something something would always be nice. Uh, keeping this channel going uh, does cost time and money and I appreciate anything that you can give. All right, let's get started and figure out how I smooth skin in Photoshop. So here we have our beautiful model and we are going to smooth her skin using a couple of actions that I created and that I've been using for years. Uh, it's really, really easy to do. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make a copy of your image, a copy of your background. And this is just standard. Whenever you're going to do anything in Photoshop, the first thing you do is you duplicate the background. Uh, that way you're not working on the original image. You're just working on the duplicate. So here's your background and you can just right click it and hit duplicate layer and then give it a name. The name can be anything. We, the default name is background copy, and we'll just go with that. Okay, so that's our background copy, and this is the one we're going to actually work on. So the first thing you want to do is you want to push the soft skin button. This is going to run the soft skin action. And it's going to put a surface blur on your image, but you have to fine tune it. And the big thing that, that defines how you fine tune the surface blur is the size of the image, because the more pixels in the face mean that you need to have a varying degree of radius and also um, what you want the light on the face to do and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's our settings here for surface blur and if you go to radius and you can look at the big picture here you'll see it change and go all the way down to zero we're not getting much blur at all and if you go really really high we're getting a monster blur right everything's getting blurred but here's the problem with using a blur like this is that what happens here is it starts to become a flat image because your areas of light and your areas of dark are blurring into each other so much that it becomes rather flat. So let's, if we back it down to say 20, you can see now there's much more, see the bright, the bright, the bright, the bright, the bright, you see what I'm saying? So if you go really big, huge, then it just becomes too generic. So what we want to do is go down I like to be somewhere, let's say, I still want to be some detail. See the little, you can still see a little edge here where the light bleeds into the dark. You still want some of that. So right about there should be good. And then there's threshold. If you take threshold all the way to the bottom, you get nothing. And if you take it up high, you get a very, very waxy, wide blur. But look what happens down here to the areas that are dark. You see how our eyes, the darkness is bleeding up? You see how our lips are bleeding up? Now this is going to be a problem. So what you want to do is take your threshold down to a lower number and now you can see how the computer is isolating the areas that are contrasty and trying to keep them from bleeding too much into the other areas. It looks very waxy. It looks like a wax figure. So there you go. So now that's a very, very way. Now we're definitely not getting any of this black going up here. We're not getting the pink of her lips going down here. And that's what we want. So it's a very waxy look to her, as you can see. But this is what we're looking for. We want to skin smooth just the skin and not the eyes and the eyebrows and the mouth. So we hit OK. Boom. Now it's going to create a mask for you. So this mask right here for you to paint on. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can do it with your mouse or you can do it with a pad and a pen. I strongly recommend a pad and a pen. Once you start using a pad and a pen for your Photoshop work, you would never go back because it just makes it so much easier to do. Um, you can purchase the one that I have. Just go to the link in my description and go to my webpage there and it shows you everything that I use and links to everything. Uh, so I really like to use the pad and a pen. So if you're using the mouse, then when you go up to your settings here, you're gonna wanna go to your settings and you wanna pick the soft round brush because you want it to be on the edges. You don't want it to be hard. You want it to be soft on the edges. And if you are using a pen, you want to go with the soft round pressure opacity. Now what that does is it means that the harder you press, then the more ink you put on the paper, so to speak, which is what you want. You want it to be like real painting. Now if you're using a mouse, you can just set your pixels at about 40 pixels or 30 pixels is fine too. And if you're using your uh, pad, you can do the same thing, but you're going to adjust it as you go. So here's our settings. You want the opacity up around, six, say 60% is a good opacity setting. 
right about there, if you're using the mouse. If you're using a pen, you don't have to set your opacity because your opacity is more or less going to be set by the pen pressure. So my opacity is at 60%, but I can take it to 100. There you go. Because my opacity is actually going to be set by my pen pressure. Right? The harder I press, the more the opacity is going to be. So now I start to paint. And right now I'm not using much pressure. I'm just dusting in, just dusting in. And the thing about using a pen and a pad for this kind of work, and you, and is one of the great things is that the, the pad has a slider on it. And I can just make my mouse, I can just make my brush bigger or smaller really quickly. And one of the great things about using a brush is it's kind of fun. I, I think that um, <laughs> there's a little throwback to the days of laying on the floor with your coloring books when you were a kid, you know, and trying to stay inside the lines and. I mean, you know, what is it? Adult coloring books have been a big, uh, a big seller in recent years, and I don't know. People like it. People like coloring inside the lines. So in areas like this, you don't want to just brush wide over it. You want to just get in and brush the area. You want to keep the detail if you can. So also be sure if they've got their eyes closed, be sure and hit the eyelids a little bit. There you go. And areas where you see wrinkles or too much detail and that's especially where there's light areas here and it's you see where it's light going into dark and you see it's kind of modeled here those are the areas that I'm going to put some pressure with my pen and try and really smooth those areas out all right so now we have our wax dummy right we've we've smoothed her out and we have our wax dummy there you go so the next step is you go over here and you go to smooth skin mask and you just drag it to the top. So what's happened here is that you had a mask where you did all of the smoothing and then the action also created just a duplicate layer for you. And we've taken the duplicate layer and we've dragged it to the top. So now this is our original layer right here and underneath it is our mask. So this is not smooth and this is smooth too much. So what we need to do is combine them and add a little bit of noise to bring back the look of pores because your skin has pores and when you take the pores out as we've done here it doesn't look natural anymore. So we've moved our little smooth skin mask to the top and then we go up here and we hit skin noise and it runs my skin noise action and what this does is add noise to the mask. It only adds noise to the areas that you smoothed out. Nowhere else, just the areas that you smoothed out. And you can adjust the noise right here with this slider. How much noise? Well, again, kind of depends on how big your picture is. The more pixels you have in the face, the more your noise amount can be because you've got so many pixels packed in there, you can go wider. If you're zooming in a lot or using a small file, then you want to have smaller pixels. So what you want to do is you want to just look right here at this window and you can see that's quite a bit of noise. That's no noise. So we're going to come up just a little bit at a time and see, uh, see now, mm, see that's a little too much noise, right? That doesn't look real. So let's back it up right about there. That kind of looks like real skin tone, right? So we hit OK. And now it's added that back into the image and it's done it with an opacity of 49%. If you go over here, you can see it's right at the halfway point, 49%. So if you select the opacity and slide all the way to the left, this is no noise. And now you can just bring it back in until you start to get right about where you want. And this is the 49%. This is where I, this is kind of my default. And if you look at that, yeah, it might be a little too noisy in her forehead and stuff. So I'm going to back it down just a little right about there. Now, when I look at this image, and let's back it up a little bit. When I look at that image, I, I see detail. You know, I see speckles and, and dots in her skin just enough to make me believe that those are her pores and that is her real skin. So now that I've finished that, I go up here and I hit my last button, which is Skin Smooth Merge. And it will merge the whole thing down for me. So this is the after and this is the before. So there she was before and there she is now. And if you get to this point, you think, oh, you know, <clears throat> I still... I still think I've smoothed her skin too much. That's okay because you can adjust the opacity on the entire process. Just go right up here, hit opacity, turn it all the way down. Now we're back to start, right? And we can just bring it in as we want.
That right there, I think, would be a good natural smooth, right? That's a good natural smooth skin right there. She still looks natural, and that looks like her skin. She doesn't look too too smooth. If you go to 100%, mm, that's a little bit what might call might, might call a, a fashion smooth, you know, right? That doesn't necessarily look realistic. realistic. Let me go back down to about 66%. That's pretty good smooth. It is still better if you go back. See, it's still better than before. There's before and there's after. So it's just it's just kind of taking the edge off just a little bit. And you're going to find that the more you do this, the less you will do. Uh, when you first start smoothing skin, you tend to overdo it and go really crazy. When I look at pictures from 10 years ago, I think, oh, my gosh, look at this marshmallow face. <laughs> and, and as time has gone on, I've tried to do less and less and less to let people's natural beauty come out and to, again, give the impression that they haven't been smoothed at all. So if there's her before and there's her after, that's just the right amount of smoothing, but she still looks real and realistic. So that's it. Uh, the time it took me to teach it to you is about three times as much time as it takes me to actually do it. Uh, if I was doing that for real, it would have taken me maybe 30 seconds to do it because of the actions. Don't forget, if you want those actions, just go to the link that is provided in the description and you will be able to get those actions for free right there. Also, there's a link there to a page on my website that has every single piece of gear that I carry so you can uh, easily find anything that I use for my photography and my travel photography. And please leave a comment and please subscribe to the channel and help me keep this channel alive. Thanks for watching.